So this is a modern purpose-built uh, sanding machine built for making lasts. These are uh, three inch wide belts. This is a classic eight inch diameter, which is good for a lot of last making. This is your classic uh, shoe repairs finishing machine as like this. But this one is only four inch diameter. It's the diameter of the uh, wheel so that you can get in like that that's important. So I have one that I made 30 years ago myself. Quite easy to make. You just have to glue the sandpaper onto a disc. But this, this machine is beautiful. It was designed and got uh, my friend Dave Savier got it made up and he's now no longer with us. And so it's, uh, it's been here used by us. Um, it's got a really good extractor on it. It's well guarded. It's nice and slow. It's like 24 grit, so it removes a lot of wood, but a very nice, safe uh, machine that gives you a lot of control. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the bottom profile right. There's no good messing about with the top until the bottom surface is right. And what I've got here is I've got a very solid piece of plywood, flat plywood, and some nice pink chalk which shows up on the wood very well. And I've got a, a 20 millimeter pitch. So you remember it's a one inch heel or 26 mil heel, but when we've got 20 mil under there, then we put a six millimeter top piece and a six millimeter sole on, then we've got our 26 mil heel. So that's still 20 millimeters of pitch. So the, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on the bottom of the last until the tread. The tread is where the actual crown of the front of the last touches the ground. The break point is where that curve starts to come up. Then there's the arch shape. Then there's what we call the range. So it's where the feather line, when you look along there, is actually straight, even though it's a curve, that at, um, it needs to have flow. It needs to have range. It needs to be coherent. And the same with the heel, heel seat. This is where the heel of the shoe is going to be built. So it's got to be smooth, it's got to be straight, and it's got to be the correct shape. Both uh, looking from the end along there and looking from uh, the bottom, you want to see a nice D shape. And also when it's on the level, I want this angle, the seat, heel seat angle, to be uh, accurate. Okay, the, what I really don't want is that to be higher than the back. Uh, on a higher heel lash, when it goes up onto a high, high heel, this is often much higher than the, the waist height, the, the back height. But for this, I actually want it to be the same height there as at the very back. Okay, so I'm going to start watching that. So I'm going to start with the, the range, the front of the last. See, the tread is much too far forward. Now the tread is uh, coming further back. Now the tread is coming back where I want it. See, there's the toe joint, the big toe joint, and there's the tread where it's touching the ground. So I'm now gonna work the heel seat.
So I'm making it so when I look along, I see a nice straight line. Even though it's a D-shaped curve, seen from the back, it's a straight line. Seen from the side, it's a straight line. That's really, really important. Otherwise, the shoe will look awful. So there I've got the tread where I want it. I've got the seat, the shape I want it. So the, the crown is this curve here and the range is this smooth shape here. Okay, so that needs to look pretty straight. The tread is where it touches the ground, a bit more chalk. You see, there's the tread where I want it, and now uh, the, I want the break point where it starts to curve and the arch to be shaped. What I've got here is a plaster cast of a foot that's very similar to the uh, plastic foot that we, uh, we built the last on. And I want to show you how I'm using my feeling rather than my visual to actually feel the shape of the arch. You can almost do it with my eyes closed and feel the shape that I have on the last. Now, I don't want the last to be a, a total replica of that art shape, because I want to give the foot some leeway for bounce, some space, so it's not entirely supported. What's called rectification, as the podiatrist rectifies the plaster cast so that the arch of the foot has some room to move. So I'm feeling it with my hand. I can do other things, like I can put my thumb at the back of the heel of the cast and feel where the ball of the foot is on the cast, put my thumb in the same place on the last, and feel the shape of the last. And I want to work until I get a very similar feeling on both. This is very much a feeling game. I don't know how many of you do dishes and don't use a dishwasher, but sometimes you're washing dishes and it looks clean. You rub your hand over it and you realize that you can feel that there's still all kinds of sticky food on it. Well, it's the same as last making. It looks right, but when you feel it, your sense of spatial awareness with your hands and when you're feeling things, it's far more sophisticated and far more sensitive than your eyes. Another thing I want to have is I want to have a slight curve on the waist. This is more for elegance than uh, for fit, so that the, the waist of the shoe looks, starts to look narrow and shaped in.
So now I've got a nice straight heel seat, a nice straight front range. I've got the waist to feel like it, uh, it's right. Enough, uh, enough support for the foot, but not too much to uh, stop it working. A feel, an accurate feel for where the joints are, the fifth joint as well. They're all starting to feel very similar on the last and the cast. So now I can turn my attention to the upper part. So I want to talk to you now about uh, what's called line. What gives a, a last elegance is the line. And the line you can see on the foot is, goes up the arch and then it goes down these bones and then along flat. Whereas on the lateral side, all the bones are very, very low. So there's the line on the foot, on the lateral, and the line on the medial goes up and then down. So similarly, I want to have the line running along there on the lateral side, and that's going to have flow, coherence, range. That all has to hang together and look right. On the medial side, it goes up there and then it climbs up the arch along the metatarsal cuneiform bones up to the navicular and then down over the, the calcaneum. How the line, that everything has to flow around those lines or it'll look wrong. You see how with the four inch wide in diameter wheel, I can get right in here in a way I can't with a saw. I'm starting to create a really nice top cone plane. So now I've done the lateral line, I'm going to work on the medial line and develop that so that you can already see that the, uh, the, the line itself is the most prominent part, but now I'm going to make a really nice feature of it.
Okay, so um, I've had to take a bit off, but you can see now that the lateral line is a prominent feature in the shape. Then the medial line comes up. It's where the, uh, the highest point. It's all hanging together. It's got flow and shape. And so uh, you can see a very clear difference between the lateral side of the last and the medial side of the last with the arch. The other thing we're looking at is the back shape. So we have to make sure that when the uh, shoe is being worn, the shoe that's made on this last, that it doesn't slip out. So it's easier with a lace-up shoe because the foot comes in, it sits down, and then the laces tie up or a strap or monk shoe or something and holds the foot back. And then the bulb of the heel, see how the massive bone there of the calcaneus, and you've got the little narrow strip of the uh, Achilles tendon. That's narrow, that's wide. So the foot goes in, is laced back, and then the bulb of the heel bone, the calcaneus, cannot get up past the narrowness, that what's called the clip, of the Achilles tendon. And that's how it holds on. So this shape, we remember we did that on the, uh, on the profile. That, again, has to be nice and round where the heel bulb is, and then it comes forward and gets narrow where the Achilles tendon is. And we want to have the shape you know, when we talked about the medial line coming down, the lateral line coming down, we pushing down. When I say pushing down, we're carving out of the last so that the shoe is narrow there, so that the shoe is pushing down onto the foot, holding it in place. So the other thing is not so much a line, it's the scoop or the sweep. What creates a really beautiful shape is kind of like a hyperbolic paraboloid is the, uh, the technical uh, mathematical term for it. It's a parabola here, and then it becomes a, a hyperbola around here. So we want this shape to go down, push over the lesser toes, and come out the middle of the hallux. So we've got room over the joint, but low over the middle. So I'm just going to do that now. <laughs> So this idea of the scoop or the sweep, see how that's sweeping around there? That's giving flow to the whole last. So the, well, you've got a shape that's running, and you know later on when I'm hand sanding it, I'll be actually working around there. Can you see that shape? And uh, the other thing, and when I went to see the Ferragamo exhibition in I think about 1978 in the V&A, and I was looking at his last, particularly on his uh, women's la ladies' last, he was pushing down really flat right here, and I've always uh, learned from that and, and seen the way he did that. I just thought it was so beautiful that you've got the, just here, you've got the base of the fifth metatarsal bone, which is quite full, but in front of that you can push down and then you're holding the foot back in an elegant way. So, you know, this is really quite a, you know, clumsy made foot done by an anatomy, anatomy person. It's, it's not your most elegant foot, but I'm trying to get, and, and, and very few of my clients do have elegant feet, I'm trying to get some elegance into this uh, otherwise quite clumpy, large, wide last. So now I've got some volume here. I just want to work on the toe shape, 
And so what I've done is that sweep that I showed you comes down over the mid hallux. It's full over the joint. It sweeps over the mid hallux, and I want to have the highest volume over the distal end, the far end of the big toe, which is right in this area. And remember, the big toe is going to be thicker than the lesser toes. The other thing is if you can get some element of straightness, when I say straightness, I don't mean like a rule, um, but, but relative to everything else, fairly straight there and fairly straight there will start to give some nice shape to the toe. Okay, so we've got on quite well with this last. You'll see, I'm sure you've noticed that the flaw that was deep inside the wood that uh, we found when we opened it up, we can now, you know, put some little uh, steel rivets in there, build that up with car body filler. That's not a lot, you know, it's a much less of a problem than it seemed. So what we're looking at is the lines that we constructed everything. There's the uh, lateral line, the medial line, see it's still there. And then running down is the axis that um, was there. Could easily have been there before we started. See, that's got the original bandsaw marks on it. And then we've got the, that line runs down the center of the top cone plane and down the back. So remember, this was going to be 5.6. So that's your C point. Your C point, that's where the top of your shoe will be. Now, notice that the heel of the, uh, of the foot is round. The heel of the last has a feather edge. So this is a sharp corner. It's a tool for making a shoe on, whereas that's a round foot. So although the uh, short heel measure is 3.32, I've got to add an allowance for that sharp corner. So I'm going to actually make it more like uh, 3, 3, 6 instead of 2, which is there. So um, that's exactly where we wanted it uh, on the profile. We wanted to have about 10 mil above that. Well, we'll finish it first. And then the long heel measure is 3, 6, 4. So again, I'm going to add, I'll make that more like 369 to make up for the squareness of the heel seat. So there's our long heel measure there. And then I'll just put this so you can see it on the draft. Okay, so I'm looking down and just see the shape of the outline. And the instep measure is there in that one. The, so the top of the instep, the instep itself is there, the joint measure is there. And on this side, we've got the joint measure there, behind the joint there, and then we go around these. 270, and I'm uh, 265, so I'm a bit under. Uh, that's a very, very bulky uh, plastic model. And so if I kept to the plastic model, I wouldn't have had a nice shape. But if I wanted to bring that up, I would add a leather patch on there. The behind the joint measure is 263. And so uh, again, I'm 259. Uh, again, just maybe a bit more on there. Uh, but again, it's not a very anatomical, consider it's an anatomy study. Okay, the middle of the joint is, uh, again, it's come out small because I've really done the arch up, 264 and 275, that one's spot on. So, uh, 
Again, you can see it's a very puffy, unshapely foot. And now I've got a rather shapely last. I might just add a patch on there in uh, shoulder leather to bring up the measures. But otherwise, I've got the I've got the tread where I want it under the second MPJ. I've got the arch doing uh, what I want to do with respect to the cast. Uh, I'm looking along there and just... Seen a nice straight range along there on the front, nice slight crown. And then when I'm looking along the heel seat, again, I'm seeing a nice flat shape there. And when I put it on the uh, block, I'm seeing just maybe one or two millimeters higher at the very back than on there, than on the uh, waist side. Actually, that's a bit low there, so I'm going to fix that. So I've more or less got the last where I wanted on this rough sander. And the last uh, piece of advice I have is, although we have fine sanders here, we can go right down to 220 grit, um, I really advise finishing off with a uh, hand sanding because as you can see, as opposed to bouncing around on a, on a drum, with hand sanding you're getting very, very close in and uh, you know, feely touchy, if you like, with the uh, with the last. But also, see how the the hand hand sanding. I'm flowing in lines. I'm following the the lines of the of the last. I'm following the lateral line. I'm following the medial line. So I'm not creating them artificially. I'm creating them by the actual. Uh, motion of the sanding itself and it gives a much more smooth satisfying uh, feel. It doesn't take nearly as long as you think it would. Of course this is 24 grit. I could at least gone up to 80 um, change the belt. But you see even though it's a I'm still got roughness on it you can see that the hand sanding is taking the bumps off and starting to make the shape look much more, for a wide foot, much more dynamic and having a sense of flow and purpose to it. So you can see I'm not working with a device, I'm not wrapping the sandpaper around a piece of wood, I'm actually using my hand, I'm not putting the last in a vise, I'm actually holding it. This is the way I was taught. I'm constantly moving the last around and looking at it. As soon as you clamp a last, then it's held in one position and you can't get around it. But it's, you know, I'm looking, I'm seeing that bump there, so I'm taking it out. I'm seeing it, I'm watching the way the light reflects off it. Very, very essential part of last making. Is that the final hand sanding? So you can see, even uh, even in these few minutes, that the beautiful grain of the ash wood and it smells beautiful as well is starting to come up because it's a bark bottom last. All of the rings of growth are all parallel to the bottom of the last, and you know you'd see that on the back as well. <clears throat> you know, the bark is there and the lines are all parallel and it, uh, it's starting to look a beautiful thing as a, as a wooden sculptor as well as a tool for making a shoe on. If I was making this, I'd go up, take it up to maybe 80 grit instead of 24. Then I'd start to hand sand it. We don't usually finish it with wax because the wax can come off on the shoe. We leave it raw so that uh, you, know, you can sketch on it during the pattern making 
and uh, you know, sk sketch the shoe as you think it'll look. You know, you can draw on here and, and show the client, you know, what the, the, you know, the wing cap might look. Do you want to have a wing cap? Or, you know, do you want to have an apron? You can draw it all on there and then just sand it off because it's unfinished wood. So that's the basic art of making a last uh, from a spoke by hand on a bandsaw, sanding wheel and hand sanding.